Not all of us can afford a separate time trial bike in addition to our road bikes, but installing a set of aero bars on your road bike can get you into a nice aero position at a fraction of the cost, but still giving you most of the benefits. So here is how to fit them. The first step is to choose the aero bars that are right for you. Now we recommend looking for some where the pads rest as close to your handlebars as possible. And that is because generally getting aerodynamic also means getting low. So if your pads rest three inches above your handlebars, that's not a good place to start. And you also find that aero bars come in two major types, individual skis or a one-piece design. We would rather go for the individual ones, they're more adjustable and they're also more aerodynamic. Now part of that adjustability comes from reach adjustment, so you want to make sure that when you buy some, they've got a little bolt there so you can adjust the length of your bars. And that's because everyone's top tubes and stem lengths vary, and so having reach adjustment means that you're not going to get too stretched out on your bike. Generally, you'll find that the lower you go, the shorter you'll want your aero bars. Now, before actually installing your aero bars, do make sure that doing so isn't going to invalidate the warranty of your handlebars. Particularly with carbon handlebars, they don't really like being clamped. To do so, they need to be specially reinforced. And so if they're not designed to be fitted with clip-on aero bars, then there's a good reason for that. Right, once you're sure that you're okay, then you can crack on. Now, you might find that you need to undo your handlebar tape to make room for your new aero bars. It's a really simple job to do if you need it. I find the simplest way of doing it is to simply re-tape with electrical tape where you want to cut them and then using a Stanley knife, very carefully make an incision. Then you can just unwrap all your excess bar tape. Trimming your bar tape back will also mean that you get a bit more freedom to move your brake and gear cables out of the way as well. Now, you might want to put a little bit of insulating tape on your handlebars where you're going to clamp it, just so that if you're removing your aero bars at any point, that you don't leave any scratches on the bars, because remember, you are clamping metal on metal. It's then just a case of undoing the bolts on your aero bars and attaching them to your handlebars. Don't do the bolts up fully tight just yet because we now need to make sure that our position on the bike is okay. So if you've got an indoor trainer, then set the bike up on it, making sure that both wheels are an equal distance off the ground. If you don't have an indoor trainer, then you can simply get on the bike and lean against a wall. Now ideally you'll have someone to help you here to look at you and indeed maybe even take a photograph because what we want is for our forearms to be parallel with the ground when you're on your aero bars. And given that you've still got a bit of movement because you haven't done the bolts up yet, you can maneuver the bars up and down until you find that right position. Now just having aero bars fitted to your bike is going to improve your aerodynamics, but really you should look to take it one or two steps further. For example, you really want to look at moving your saddle forward. Because being on aero bars is likely to rotate your hips forward, moving the saddle forward will keep the hip angle in relation to the bottom bracket the same. And you'll quite likely find that when riding, you're going to slide forward on the saddle anyway, just to compensate even more. Secondly, we want to look at handlebar height. Generally speaking, lower is better. So if you've got any spacers under your stems, it'd be worth replacing those and putting them on top just to drop your handlebars. And you can go even further than that, you could get a new stem which is more negatively angled to drop your bars even lower. Although it is worth being a little bit cautious, whilst lower might be better, you still need to be able to put the power out so you can't go to any extremes. With that in mind, the stem that I've got is really negatively angled but very short. So while I get lower, the reach isn't unmanageable. Finally, don't neglect your helmet and your clothing. If you're going to go to the bother of putting aero bars on your bike, then you might as well cut corners wherever you can. And seeing as your helmet and your clothes account for quite a bit of drag, it does make sense to keep it in mind. Now, if you want to see a video on time trial training tips, then you can get through to one just up there. Or to see how to get more aerodynamic on your road bike, click just down there. Finally, subscribe to GCN, just click over there.